the first presentation is uh, uh, from uh, France. It's called Re Revived, Revivre, I think in, Fran in French. <laughs> uh, that's a project that Solar Studios has uh, created together with the National Museum of Natural History in, in, in Paris. And it's Jan and Florent who's going to present it. So please, uh, you, can, you can start your presentation and, and introduction, introduction of yourself. Um, maybe I can introduce. I, I, I'm the founder of um, the studio with Jeremy Frey. He's a director. He's not connected today. And Jan is head of operation for our studio. Uh, we founded the studio two years ago. Uh, it's named Saola. And our first production and installation uh, um, has happened in the, um, the French National uh, History Museum in Paris. And it's name Revivre. Uh, Yann, uh, yeah, you're, you're, yes, you are. Yes, I think I, you, you can hear me now. Yep. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Like, like Florence said, I'm the operation manager uh, for uh, Saola Studio. And uh, I, think, I think you said everything we need to know. Uh, maybe you want to know more before we uh, start with the video. But maybe Revivre and the project, maybe I can explain to you a little bit uh, better. So Revivre, it's, uh, it's an immersive journey uh, where the visitor uh, equipped with uh, AR glasses uh, are able to, um, to discover the life of 10 extant spaces in the National History Museum, so in Paris. Um, and the, the aim of this experience was to uh, for us to uh, try to increase the sensibilization about the question of biodiversity. And uh, I, I think you, um, I, don't, I, I think maybe we can start with the video and uh, where we explain how we built uh, this experience in close collaboration with the scientific expert of the museum. And uh, maybe after we will be able to answer you, your question if you have. And then we have questions afterwards. Yeah. Of course. And we can start the video. I just uh, have the idea to make to bring this extinct species back to life with augmented reality. And this crazy idea was not so crazy, in fact. <laughs> we, we make it real. What is, was really uh, something special with the augmented reality is that you can share the experience with people, with family. Um, and, uh, and we can recreate these animals uh, thanks to technology and thanks also to knowledge. But first, that was the idea that I think um, gathered all of us uh, around this project. Revivre is an augmented reality experience that takes place in our room of uh, extinct and endangered species in the museum. Uh, it's a 15-minute journey in a permanent exhibition. The visitors will uh, discover 10 spaces from our collections, which will come, come to life just in front of them. Uh, this immersive experience intends to tell us about, uh, uh, and especially raise awareness about the preservation of biodiversity. Uh, and, uh, 
for, for, for that we decided to tell the story about spaces from our uh, era. Uh, we're not speaking about dinosaur or, or something, but more about Tasmanian tiger, uh, the great oak, uh, the stellar sea cow. And um, we, uh, we recreated all those animals in 3D in a very realistic way, uh, trying to, uh, to, to touch a really um, scientific veracity uh, in order to create a very sensitive link between the, the visitors and the, uh, the, the 3D object. Most of the specimens presented here uh, belong to ex either instinct or endangered animals and um, uh, of course most of them are big mammals or large birds uh, but we have also some insects and some plants and um, uh, the Revivre uh, experience is a way to um, show those big animals but also to alarm people about uh, the danger of uh, human presence on Earth. With big animals, it's obvious when a big animal disappears. It's not such obvious when it's a small animal. Uh, viewing the, the disappearance of uh, elephants or lions or tigers, it's something. But uh, when you realize that uh, very small organisms, uh, tiny insects from the soil, from the air, uh, which are so important for the whole tree of life. Um, it's also a way to, to alarm people about that. When I suggest to the director of the, the gallery uh, this uh, Revive experience, um, he was he was very interested uh, because he, he knew that that was something uh, very a, a new way uh, of visiting the, the museum, and also that we can um, highlight the, this uh, room of the extinct species. So he was very interested. But um, then, then Florent arrives on, on the, uh, in the team. We, we find a, a business model together with the museum, but after that, we work together to be like very uh, accurate and exact, mm -hmm. accurate on on the, the the animals. So it was at different levels, a, a very good collaboration yeah. and, it, and, and and very fast. In fact. The work with Saula was very easy. Um, they wrote the scenario and uh, we discussed the text of, uh, for the various species. And um, uh, we also discussed some questions about the locomotion of the animals. Uh, Saula was able to uh, come to the museum and, and work in our specialized libraries. Um, uh, when we had discussions, we, we exchanged through video conferences and, and uh, uh, we, share, we shared our um, questions and, and uh, all together the collaboration between Saula and the museum was very good and very easy. We collaborated with the museum in, in different ways, uh, mainly through their uh, documentary resources, uh, sketches, books, testimonies, uh, biological data and obviously the knowledge of their researchers and their scientists like Christine Lefebvre or Guillaume Lecointre they helped us a lot um, to sort all of this uh, data and to be able to resuscitate the species and of course uh, we cross-checked um, we sorted and we gathered all the most um, believable information uh, to give um, the best uh, result possible in this experience. We try to select a number of specimens um, from various classes of vertebrates. Uh, of course, it's not possible to have examples of all the the endangered species. Uh, so we selected uh, some mammals um, 
very emblematic birds, uh, also a tortoise and one insect. We also wanted to have a link, of course, with the specimens presented in the gallery. Some of them are very um, special, for example, the great oak. Um, we, have, we are lucky to have one specimen. There are not that many specimens in other museums. Uh, same thing for the quagga. So we also wanted to um, allow people to, 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 to see our specimens. Uh, so altogether, it was a combination of um, a selection of species um, uh, from our collections, but also uh, good examples of those uh, instinctions. We show the diversity of species in terms of families, of orders, scientifically talking, um, to show the real sense of biodiversity. In Greek, bios is life, biodiversity is, bio is diversity of life. So we needed to show like there is a, a lot of different forms of animals on Earth. So we also shows original species to surprise the public, to fascinate the public. And I think like the species like the stellar sea cow or the Tasmanian tiger or even the small Angolan flightless dung beetle uh, play this role of fascinating, surprising the public. It's a long and narrow room which uh, invites visitors to a uh, uh, shared work uh, between the window displays and the collection. And also it's um, a real showcase uh, to, for the most rare and uh, precious naturalist collection of the museum. Uh, some, uh, some of them are the, are the last uh, evidence of uh, extinct species. This is a focus to a unique collection and uh, it makes proximity to the animals. Some of them are like standing just next in front of us. And um, this uh, immersive and uh, sensitive experience, uh, it's a real vehicle of uh, awareness um, of the natural uh, protection cause. We were kind of amazed because uh, one of the species we had chosen, uh, the uh, dung beetle from Angola, flightless dung beetle, was recently rediscovered like in uh, 2016 I think so some years ago and uh, this can happen uh, we consider that uh, 70 species are getting extinct every day uh, which means um, around 26,000 species per year this is huge um, but sometimes there is good surprises there is good news in biodiversity and some species are discovered or rediscovered like the, the dung beetle Jim got the idea, and with his idea, and, and of course with the approval of the museum, we start thinking how to make it real, how to make it happen, because it's really expensive projects. It's not so easy to work with public museum because they are not so rich sometimes. So we've got the idea and we develop a, pro a project where we arrive and we said, okay, if we can bring the, the the capitals and bring the money to make it to make it happen. Uh, are you okay to share the revenue as a co-production? Because we are from film industry, so we copy the, this model. And they said, okay, yeah, of course, if we can have the project, we are okay to share the, the revenue from the tickets. So we said, okay, now we've got a business model. We start the studio. We raise money from uh, private investors, uh, so very good investors, business angels, friends and family, uh, foundation, uh, some different people we gather around the project with, that really believe that uh, augmented reality for uh, new, as a new mediation for museum is really an innovation. So once we've got, we, we gather this money, we have been able to start the production and, and for the last seven months now, we worked really hard to create a very high level 3D. The technology made it uh, possible, but the, that's, we are in fact the team 
Uh, so we have uh, Remy, who is a naturalist, uh, Florent, who is a producer, uh, Camille, who is a scenographer. We have uh, Benjamin Alcover, who is leading the 3D artist team. So with all that people, we just were thinking about uh, telling a story first uh, and to make, to move people. Uh, and to talk about uh, extinction of uh, animals, that was the, the, the main uh, purpose of the project. And, uh, and then, because the technology is here and that we, ca we can control it, not that much first, but now we control it, um, we, the, the, the story uh, was, was, was there. And actually, at the really beginning, we never care about the technology. We, we, we sold with we told a story, Jim told a story to an ID, and we, we thought about the ID. And for the first day, we thought, okay, technology today is something that can be manageable, if I may say. I mean, we can find the solution for the technology, which is harder is to find IDs and to find the solution for the audience to believe the story we were telling. So to be honest, at the really beginning, I see three years ago, yeah. even, even the headsets and glasses are, was not so good. And now thanks to new models, it's even better. So, and, and tomorrow it will be new models and we follow this path of technology. I don't think technology is an issue, it's, it's a way to, to make it happen. Our technology takes place on a real environment. Uh, it's for this proje project, especially it ensured on our well-mounted uh, animal collections. When uh, VR technology uh, brings uh, the spectator to a full uh, virtual environment. Yeah, well, uh, it's, a, it's a long way to go. Uh, so first we had the scenario and, um, and there was a lot of ideas and, uh, and then there was the reality that came. Um, and uh, with, with reality came the, the limitation uh, that came with the, the, the um, HoloLens 2 that we are using. Uh, and um, uh, so we, uh, as a, a production studio, we have uh, our own uh, uh, animation, animation team uh, that is uh, creating uh, uh, with all the all the uh, other advice of the of the of the scientists. Uh, they are recreating all those animals. And uh, what's really important for us is to give uh, uh, the most uh, the best immersive. Um, experience for the, the visitors uh, so um, we had to deal with a lot of the constraints of the physical constraints and all the technical constraints and uh, to yeah to to go along this big journey that is uh, that is really the, the 3d the cgi artists uh, 3d artists that uh, they are able to do like uh, really uh, uh, motion picture I mean in terms of quality of 3d and uh, so it's it's not like that in the in the augmented reality it's frustrating so, yeah it's frustrating a, a, a bit but because you can turn around the animals because you have animals going over you like you are deep in the in the sea for example and all that uh, you have dif a different uh, experience a way to appreciate it so People, people in the team, in fact, enjoy very much to do to do 3D for this kind of experience. But we see that we have uh, room for for improvement concerning the, the, the glasses. Yeah, but the, the, as you said, the audience is really like moved and transported into this new reality, and the story we can tell, and and the voice and the comments and what we tell are also important, which is not linked to real to, to the technology. So. This is this is this is what makes the experience really good and, and, and really like interesting. But at the same time, yeah, we are we can't wait the new improvements of the technologies. I think the challenge today for the museum is to help their visitors to understand the collections through uh, storytelling to help them to understand collections rather than just uh, knowledge. 
That's exactly what we try to do with Revib. We don't just talk about the extinct species. We try to explain their behavior, their historical context, and the, the reason why they are disappeared. Welcome to the Endangered and Extinct Species Room of the Gallery of Evolution. We shall travel together through time and space to meet extraordinary animals known to our ancestors, yet now forever extinct. Get ready for Revivre. Thank you for this interesting presentation in the movie. Uh, there are uh, some questions in the chat. Are you able to read it yourself or? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, let's start uh, in order. Which were the greatest obstacles to overcome in order to realize a project? Um, um several uh i think there are two different categories the one that directly is linked to the journey and the installation so technical uh um and and uh, and artistic and um and scientist to deal with maybe yan will will uh, explain it a bit more and in other hand of course to try to find the right business model um, and to integrate, um, which is really great because it's a permanent exhibition. Um, so it's not something we imagine as a, as a short time event. It's really for a long, long, long time, uh, at least two years, maybe four or six, um, to try to find with the, with the museum. So we imagine as a co-production and, and in a way I will answer the next question. What is the business model, uh, total budget and total ticket fee? So we, 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 we knew that offering this uh, new installation uh, for museum is not so easy because it's kind of expensive um, installation using uh, new technology, AR, 3D, uh, animation. So uh, in our mind, we, we took time to raise the money and to make sure we got everything to be ready. It took us about seven, eight months to collect everything and to prepare. Um, and then for the mod business model, um, at the really beginning, it was supposed to be a six uh, euro ticket fee. And we split it. Uh, we take most part of the ticket fee and the rest for uh, running cost. And uh, because running uh, cost and daily operation uh, deal with the museum. And we offered everything uh, ready to operate with the headset, uh, all the equipment, the 3D, the scenario, and uh, the training. Okay. Uh, the budget total is about 700,000, something like this. It's not so easy to give a precise um, amount and budget on this project because as it was a, a co-production, all the costs on our side were not so calculated because we offer a lot of work in terms of scenario, of ID, of things. If, I, if we sell it, maybe it could be a bit different. Um, uh, what's the next question? Um, may, okay, maybe, uh, Jan, you can uh, answer about the, the obstacle of what uh, have been um, tricky in terms of technical and operation. Yes, uh, of course. The, the 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 first big challenge we we had was the uh, the, the the scientific veracity. Uh, we uh, we produced this experience for a natural history museum, so we we wanted to be very accurate on the pedagogical content, and uh, we wanted to to be the closest as possible uh, um, in the modelization and the animation of these animals. Of course, those animals are extinct. Uh, so, as, uh, as we explained on the video, we only have testimonies, we have some data, but it's quite an affair to, 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 to go from the data and from testimony, some of them are from 200 years or, or sometimes more, uh, and 
to try to recreate it in the most realistic way. It was the first uh, big challenge. We, were, we have been very helped by the scientific experts. Uh, the other big challenge in the experience itself was to manage the fact that the visitor should be autonomous uh, in, uh, in the journey. Uh, so we have to really wrote um, the, the path, the journey, uh, the deambulation, uh, how to make the visitor go from the starting point to the end without any help. Um, so it, it was one of the tough uh, part of, uh, of the production of the experience. How to make the visitor go from the starting point to the end without any help, uh, with a graphic indication, with audio commentary helping him to, to guide himself. Then that was the most, uh, the most difficult thing. After, uh, think about, um, and, and in the end, the, the last challenge was to define a, um, a relevant exploitation. Uh, we wanted to make this experience um, profitable for everybody, and uh, we wanted that the most of most people can see it. Uh, like we say, it was a, it's a large scale experience, and it's one of the of the first one to to, to be as that scale. So okay. um, so so define a, a, a rotation. We in fact the, the the experience goes like this: the the people came in this in this room. We own the cask. We we buy all the headsets. Uh, we, we bought. 25 headsets, uh, HoloLens 2 for this experience, uh, in order to manage uh, a group of six person going to the experience every six, seven minutes. So we can, uh, we can have like 300 per people per day uh, doing this experience, uh, approximately between three, 300 and 350. And, um, okay. Uh, it, it was a real, real reflection uh, for us. Sorry to say, but we have to stop there. <laughs> we have to move on to the next. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> next, next uh, point in the program. Uh, maybe you can, we'll be able to to answer the the, the questions in the chat. Uh, yes, of course. During, yeah, we'll do so. We, we, we start the next presentation. So no we, we have to move on. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks to you.